Welcome back to episode 13 of the series in which I swatch all the cores and in today's episode we have five what I'm going to call red browns because these are more warmer browns than the ones that are coming up in the next episode. So in this episode we have Queen Burnt Orange made with PR206, Venetian Red made with PR101, Mars Orange Deep made with PR101, Burnt Sienna Natural made with PBR7 and Transparent Brown Oxide made with PR101. So let's start off with the Queen Burnt Orange and this one I think it has two colours and let me show you what I mean by that. Can you see that? There's two tone happening here where there's like a darker more muted brown or almost gray color happening here you kind of have to sometimes squint at it to see it so we have this two-tone effect happening up here and that lasts till about stage two now i'm counting one two and then three and four are pretty much the same and then five so you get four stages instead of the intended five and there is a significant drop off in value right here in value in stage two so you just got to be careful when you are uh, wanting to create gradation to make sure you really pull that color down but for a, a queen color it doesn't suffer from cauliflowering which is really good it means it's a lot easier to handle than some of the other colors that we've seen in this series and just in general like queens and thalos that tend to be prone to cauliflowering it is classified as transparent and I would agree with that. It's classified as staining and I would say this is very staining. I don't tend to say very staining because it, staining levels by eye is very difficult to just categorize. But I would say this is very staining because you've I hardly got any color out of there at all. So you kind of want to make sure that that is where you want to put your paint on when you put it on because you're not going to get it back off again. Because it's very staining and it's transparent, it's very good at layering. So the glazes are going to come out beautifully. You can really see the two layers and there's no lifting. It's a really good at layering. In terms of color mix, it's pretty high in tinting stress. You get nice bright mixes, nice bright orange that, again, has that mottled color effect that we see around here. I have been noticing while I've been swatching this and in and this week I've been swatching the next series, which is going to be the M. Graham. I see colors that aren't granulating and as in this isn't a granulating color, but you do get this mottled texture happening and i have been reading into granulation versus flocculation and let me tell you there isn't really a consensus everyone thinks they know what they're saying but they all say just different things and in some forums they have like discussions over the granulation versus flocculation has broken down into name calling which was like Hilarious to watch, but probably not fun to get involved in. Basically, for what I can gather, it's the cause of the mottled look. And I'm just wondering if this is then flocculation rather than granulation. But I think I could do an entire video on that and maybe we will. I have looked at all the recommended references that you guys refer to. I still feel that there isn't a definite definition of it. So if you have any more, please send me my, my way. I will look at them all and figure this thing out. Anyway, with the yellow and certainly with the sailor blue, you really see the mottled effect. And the queen rose creates this beautiful corally pink color, which I just love. Of course, the sailor blue or ultramarine blue, any of that kind of color is going to be a good complementary color to the queen burnt orange and neutralize that color for you nicely. It is made with PR206, which is, of course, the Queen Aquino Burnt Scarlet. And for Queen, I was actually quite surprised at how little this dispersed, but I'm also not surprised considering the value just kind of stops here. So it is quite small in dispersion, but I see a lot of texture and tentacles happening on this one. 
Next up, we have the Venetian red. You can see here that it's so much more opaque. So you have one, I would say two, three, four, five. So even though it's slightly shifted in where the stages are, you do actually get to see five stages, which is really rare and cool. So in one sense, if you are a little bit too scared of how much core moves, then this will be a good option for you. But if you are going for core because of how much it moves and how wild it is, you might be a little bit disappointed with this one. It does suffer from a little bit of cauliflowering on the side here, but it's pretty minimal considering how rough I am with the water level to in test these colors. You get a very matte look in the mass tone and then it just fades out quite nicely through the gradation. It is, as I said, very opaque and I would agree with that. It's classified as staining and again, this is very staining as well. Because it's staining, it is good at the glazing. However, you just if you want to see the bottom layer, then you are going to have to use a much thinner mix rather than a mass tone to be able to see the layer underneath. It is very high in tinting strengths. Look how dark that blue is and just all of them. If you have a high tinting strength palette, this is going to go in great and it will be a great color to have on there because if you have high tinting strength palette you probably have really bright colors this is a good one to really mute down all the colors it is made with pr101 which is a synthetic iron oxide red and it goes completely wild with the venetian red within dispersion you have the mass tone here you also have little bits of grainy bits you get these particles happening in the middle can you see that? And then lots of feathering here and huge amounts of halo. And then it just disperses. The halo is so huge. I feel like it went out and then came back in and that's where it stopped. So it's going to go really, really far if you let the watercolor travel as much as it wants. Then we have the Mars Orange Deep, and this again is very matte, just like the Venetian Red. I would say that this is like the brighter orange cousin of the Venetian Red in terms of the, the opacity and how strong it is. But then, as I said, this is much warmer color. It is good at the gradation. There's no cauliflowering. I see one, two, three, four. If you squint five here, so pretty slow mover for a core, which is good if you that's what you're looking for. And it is you get the warmth of the orange coming through a lot in stage two and stage three. It's almost like if you mix Venetian red with like a quinacridone burnt orange or orange kind of color. It's that kind of brightness. It is classified as opaque and I would agree with that. It is classified as staining and again I would agree with that. It is a good glazer, although there's a tiny bit of lifting, but it's not too bad because it's it's a staining color, so you're going to have a easy time glazing. It is, again, very high tinting strength. Not as high as Venetian Red, but it's still considerably high compared to some other colors. It creates, again, these mottled textures on a cold press paper. Just to remind you, this is on a Bockingford cold press paper. With the, especially with the Aurelion, you see a lot of texture happening and not so much with the Queen Rose and the Thalo Blue Yellow Shade. It is made with PR101, which is a synthetic iron oxide red again. And again, huge, huge amounts of dispersion. And I'm sure this will, like, it would probably go across an entire Imperial sheet if you <laughs> let this color go. It's got some awesome textures. So you get these particles happening in the middle. You also see a lot of granulation happening here. Lots of particles showing up. Then we have the Burnt Sienna Natural. And I would say this is in comparison like a more natural, more muted down version of the Mars Orange Deep in that it is an orangey brown, but obviously a lot more toned down in intensity. 
we have one two and then three and four if you squint but basically it drops off significantly in value from here and so if you are wanting to do gradation you really got to pull that paint down with you otherwise you're going to end up with this very very defined edge it's very good in terms of water control they there's no color flowering happening but again just remember this bit it is classified as semi-opaque and i would say this is opaque it is classified semi-staining and i would agree with that it's classified as granulation and i can just about see some granulation here but not hugely it's not like an ultramarine blue but you really do see a lot of texture happening with the color mixes but it won't be so obvious if you use it on its own it's not great at glazing you see a lot of lifting and and unevenness happening so if you are wanting to do lots of glazes i would use the other two colors rather than this one it's again very high tinting strengths this is one thing i noticed with core all their natural colors have very high tinting strengths which is great because then it plays off really well with the very high tinting strengths quins and thalos that they have so you get these nice strong intense mixes happening with the colors lots and lots of texture happening as well it is made with pbr7 which is brown iron oxide and the dispersion it's not as big as like the mars orange deep the halos aren't as strong. You get this mass tone in the middle. I actually see a lot more granulation in here. And then just a little bit of halo on either side. And finally for this video, we have the transparent brown oxide. And this is a transparent granulating orangey brown. You get a lot of texture here and then you get a lot more subtle the granulating natural colors are definitely more subtle than your cobalts and ultramarines you just get a little bit happening and if you want to see these test sheets in detail and up close then you can find the high res scan of all of this over on my patreon which is patreon.com forward slash autocano you get very very faint granulation here it is little bit more strong in its warmth and the orange undertone than it is in the burnt sienna it is classified as transparent and i would agree with that it's classified as staining i would agree with that it is good at glazing because it's transparent you get to see the layer underneath really really clearly which is nice it is i would say high tinting strengths rather than very high in tinting strengths and can i just say i love the colors that come out of these color mixes especially these two beautiful corally color and then beautiful deep muted green color and i love the texture that's happening here i personally would pick this one for its mixing ability because look how pretty these colors are it is made with pr101 which again is the synthetic iron oxide red and in terms of dispersion it doesn't disperse as much it's not as crazy as some of the colors we've seen you would get a tiny little mass tone here and a medium amount of or medium intensity of the haloing happening here by the way if you want to try any of these colors i have the companion dot card for you this month to the episodes that we are seeing this month and this is the core neutral color dot card this is the part three and the final part of the core dot cards that i'm going to be making it has trans Transparent yellow oxide, nickel azo yellow, queen gold deep, Venetian red, transparent brown oxide, Van Dyke brown, raw umber and sepia. This is a great way to try out the core colours without having to buy every single tube to find out which one is going to work for you. If you'd like to receive this dot card, then you can do so by heading over to patreon.com forward slash autocarno and signing up to the appropriate tiers. So that's it for this video. What did you think of these colors? In general, I would say these two are very, very strong, high tinting strength, high dispersion. If you are going for core because of its wildness, then pick one of these two colors. If you want a little bit more tamer, 
little bit more easier to handle than I would pick and like not quite as intense that like I would go for either the burnt sienna or the transparent brown oxide. However, they are all really high in tinting strengths. So if you are looking for a more softer, natural, more something that would work really well with cobalt and your ultramarines, then you might have a little bit of difficulty finding one that works for you with cobalt. Maybe try a different brand. But for the strong and wild, this is an awesome set of neutral colors that are that would work really really well with what you already have on your palette huge thanks to core again for sending me these amazing paints and just want to let you know that this morning i did receive a replacement of the permanent scarlet but also the yimmin blue which is not on sale but they wanted me to test it so i will be doing that soon but i just wanted to let you guys know that that is coming up at some point thank you so much for watching this episode do let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and if you have like an awesome use for one of these colors or any of these colors then do let me know in the comments down below thank you for watching this video like and subscribe and i will see you in the next episode which will be the dark browns